In fact, that was the first question which I wanted to ask uh, uh, Dr. Harsh Mahajan. Uh, technology, expensive. Infrastructure, expensive. That increases cost for the patient. Where is this progress or, or, or development in technology in this country going? Are there low-cost solutions to high-cost technology available within this country? And if so, why aren't they being used? Or on the other hand, why aren't they being accepted in many cases by the Indian population? For example, I know that there's an Indian stent and yet most of the patients come to me and say, Indian wo to mad dalna hamara to bahar wala dalna. Why? Why is that happening? I think... Uh, no, but you can answer many are, other, there many are, other, there other are, issues. There are several reasons for this. One, of course, the primary one is a matter of quality and confidence. You know, what you won't put in yourself, you have no right to, you know, give to someone else. Just because there's a difference in cost, you may be harming the patient more than providing benefit. He may do better without the stent than with the stent. That is point number one. Always the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Point no number comments. two. I'm a, chairing the session. Yeah. <laughs> on a, Go ahead. On a, on a, on a serious note, uh, point number two, I think there is this increasing competitiveness about having the best technology. And there we may be following the technology producers, the companies who sell the equipments, and you know very well as a user yourself, that they will bring out technology in installments so that you have to get to the next step and the next step. So you mean and, say uh, private uh, healthcare is fueling a competition amongst various providers to say we are better than you because we got an X Tesla which is you, better you, than the you Y see Tesla that, you have. You see that on a daily basis. That's the private scene. Then there's the government scene where till today I don't think there is any cost benefit ratio or cost assessment done to see whether the equipment that was uh, uh, set up, it, it actually delivered what it was to do. That's number one. Number two, I am a professor of radiology in a government institution once in my lifetime. Probably I'll get this opportunity to buy an equipment for my department. I want to buy the best that is available. And there are no government curbs as to you know, we, we talk about the best technology and there is the good enough technology. I mean, depending on whether it's a small hospital, it's a large hospital, it's a referral center or it's a, a state of the art uh, place. I don't say that the best technology should not be there, but someone somewhere needs to regulate it. In the private setup, probably the demands of having some profitability may at some point uh, 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 time cap where you are to go as competition increases so, so, so in the government sector there's I just got to say you've raised two points one is of course the acceptance by the public relates to confidence on the technology which has been created in this country and that actually relates to a number of issues including the fact that there are no proper bodies which actually in many instances are able to certify these projects. I've also noticed that there be, in situations where there are bodies like ICI, etc., uh, uh, et who are able to mark that product as being standard enough, like an NABH for a hospital, then there is a confidence. But in most instances, especially for medical equipment, there is no body strong enough to be able to say it goes through our processes and it is good enough. So I think that is where this issue about stents, etc., comes in. Not proper research, not proper documentation, nobody to actually control it. But the second issue, I, I'd like uh, 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 Sanjay to address this. Any equipment, be it a uh, uh, dialysis machine, be it a CT scanner, we're now having options available in this country, low cost options. Now those are not implants, those are technologies, those are therapies, those are, can help a number of patients at a low cost. Why aren't we progressing to them? I know that uh, uh, in, the medic in the cardiology sphere, uh, there are cath labs which are available at one third the cost as, com uh, com uh, as by the big multinationals. What is in your field happening and why aren't we moving towards those in terms of delivering care at a much lower cost? A uh, couple of points in this. One is uh, the providers as the large uh, private companies which are providing medical technologies <clears throat> sorry, are largely without regulation. Uh, there is hostile competition between them, and as uh, 
a clinician and as a hospital administrator, I can tell you there's immense amount of things which roll, including money. There is no regulation. Uh, point number two is, in terms of talking in terms of a hospital spending as far as a given budget is concerned on a particular equipment, the first thing which I will note is, one, is it going to improve clinical outcomes of patients in that department? Two, what is the total number of patients I would be able to generate from within the hospital walk-in and generated hospital generated patients? Three, what is my referral load? If I'm not going to break even with that, and if I feel that the cost which is incurred in procuring the equipment is never going to break even in, let's say, seven years or ten years. Probably I will think twice before buying it for the hospital. On the other hand, if I feel that the clinical outcomes are f going to be far better with this equipment, with this technology, then the break-even period doesn't count so much. So outcome-based management is very important. Any other questions, please? which is very vital for it is knowledge management which is very vital for clinical performance in this direction we have worked 20 years on to integration of total global diseases into a software and we found that disease detection could be very simple as uh, dr lelly has pointed out with a simple investigation i will cite few to give you idea what knowledge management can give what the equipment may not be needed. Say Rolex formation in one of the files was mentioned from the medical college, and I am a pr practitioner as a consultant with 50 year experience from East and West. And with Rolex formation, my uh, sort of creativity gave me idea of macroglobinemia in a second. And the person who was a very good uh, local officer, and the lady died undiagnosed, later on found that she was not even, I gave her the idea, she went to Pune, and it was substantiated that macroglobinemia should have been diagnosed one year earlier. I will cite a second case of ferritin high. How many people have diagnosed diabetes related to ferritin high? Uh, if you give a challenge liver disease and diabetes, I think the first option should be simple hemochromatosis, iron overload. I will cite another case of leptospirosis. The pioneer institution diagnosed it autoimmune arthritis. When the challenge was given through a software application, knowledge-based application, the leptospirosis was the answer. And the lady was taking for nine months immunosuppressive drugs. Learned people will know it. The another case who came from America, he I, said, I'd like you to be brief uh, uh, so yeah, that we can come to a I conclusion on your, one more case, on your and uh, I'll finish within half a minute. Case from America, the Sadar Sikh gentleman, six feet high, he came for a diagnosis of his problem. And from the first very sort of uh, appearance, and I could give a challenge, small challenge of one word, and uh, the person was uh, syphilitic, and he admitted he was syphilitic, which wa he was never diagnosed earlier, except in India, 20 years earlier. The last case I would mention is the homocysteine level. In coronary care cases, how often the homocysteine is really a simple test done to sort of pre-test, it could be vulnerability for coronary disease. We have done hundreds of cases through this software application, and it can go just in pennies worldwide if it is rightly deployed. Thank you very much. Thank you. In fact, I would like to end this with, with one last discussion and i would w want to involve dr shakti gupta because he's creating as we go forwards loads of hospital managers very important as we go into healthcare delivery in times to come what is your single emphasis i find that protocol based management which actually relates to efficiencies outcomes optimization of investigations final delivery of care and is patient-centric is perhaps still not being practiced in most hospitals. As you train your administrators, do you actually make this a very vital, important education for them as to how to transfer this emphasis on the clinicians to be able to, to create better hospitals? Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, first thing actually that uh, which I lay stress actually how we can have optimum utilization of the available facility. 
or how we can have optimum utilization of the technology which is available at uh, Coming back to the question which has been raised, that how we can uh, utilize, especially in public sector hospital, what I have observed, what our technology is available, our facilities are available that is underutilized. Why we can't share with different hospitals, we can have a slot for other hospitals also, which can equally utilize. Suppose I'm giving example of PET scan, which costs about say 25 to 30 crore rupees. How every hospital can uh, afford that actually? Or why we should go when we don't have that much workload in our hospital? If Dr. Harsh Majan can give an appointment for MRI at 12 in the night, at 3 in the morning, why the public sector hospital cannot do that actually? You'll be surprised that the waiting for MRI in AIMS is two years. If, uh, do we expect a patient to wait for two years for MRI in an OPD? Though in patient we have a zero waiting, but how we can afford that actually? Similarly, because of underutilization of the facilities like operation theaters and other areas and all diagnostics, we are giving a waiting of two years. How a brain tumor patient can wait for six months? Because whatever facilities are OTs, why we can't reschedule the OTs so that we can have optimum utilization of the manpower which is available with us, of the facilities, of the technologies. This is a very important component which we take care when we're producing the young future administrator for the country. Thank you. And these young future administrators will perhaps help us to impart value medicine to the patients. It's got nothing to do. We need temples of technology. We still need good healthcare de deliveries through clean, marbled hospitals, uh, which actually provide outcome-based, same quality of care down to the t level two and level three cities. Perhaps it may never travel down to the villages. What villages need is government initiatives for multiple disease-free processes, be it infections, be it sanitation, be it hygiene. But our, our ability to be able to, to deliver care to a much broader population of the so-called middle class of this country is, has to be our agenda, and that has to be subsidized, quality, care at a value. And that's probably our agenda. Thank you very much for your attention.